So Austin, uh, welcome to the show, my man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This is a treat for me. I love I love fraud. I love talking to fraud guys and girls. Um, we just think uh, differently. We're always calling bullshit. We're always looking for something. <laughs> it's going to be a fun show. Oh, yeah. So now before we get started, and this is something we always like to do, is uh, is really talk about some empathy. And, and the reason why we start with empathy, it just gets the audience a different dimension on who we're talking to. This is a, a way to get to the authentic conversation. Then we're going to get into data and things about data and, and, and fraud and things like that. But why don't we start with, I believe you're in the tri-state area, right? Are you New York, New Jersey, Connecticut? Is that where you're at? So I actually was in West Village it. in New York. Um, I actually moved yes. back to my hometown in Indiana for a bit. It was really difficult to be in New York. I was in a studio apartment about 250 square feet. And after looking at the same four white walls over and over again, it's like, <laughs> all right, I need a little space. I need to get to a backyard and be around some uh, family and friends. So I, I'm back in Indiana for right now. I'm actually in the, the pizzeria. My family owns a pizzeria, so you'll see some basketballs, uh, some memorabilia. So uh, that's where I'm currently at right now. There, there's a lot here, so we're going to take it very, very slow, all right? Because okay. <laughs> we, we've I've done hundreds of podcasts. You're one of me. Um, you're one of three people I've spoken with that have done an, an exodus. So there's a lot, okay? There's a lot that I want to dig into. Mm -hmm. So one, I did the exodus from San Francisco to Miami. So I'm, I'm with you on the exodus. What month did you just say, I, I'm out, I got to go? What month was it? I think it was May. Because <laughs> um, it, it was, oh, New York was an apocalypse. Like there was nobody in Times Square. There was nobody at the World Trade Center. Uh, I was like, all right, I, I think it's time to, to get out <laughs> and, and go awesome. and to go somewhere else and just to be around people. And I don't know, COVID just creates a, a lot of space and makes you second guess everything that you're doing before. And it's like, do I really want to keep doing this or do I want to change things up and try something new? So, um, no, that's, that. uh, I think what COVID brought. So it started, I guess, yeah, it was March, April. I think April is when, I mean, I was in San Francisco. We shut down or went self-isolation in February. That's late February is when, like, I think Google, Stanford, Facebook started doing it. All right. So now you have the opportunity to pick anywhere in theory, right? Where's your anywhere? So your anywhere was home. Yeah. I actually went to Austin, Texas for about three months. And I, I stayed there for a bit. And then I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go back with uh, my family and spend yep. some time there. And now it's like, okay, what's next? Exactly. Where am I going to go next? So, <laughs> yeah. We're going to be friends for a long time. I get you. Same. It's, <laughs> it, it's for me. Um, where's my anywhere? It's, it's a question that, um, you know, it's not, a, it's, it's work from home, work from anywhere. And then when it's like, where's my anywhere, my anywhere was Florida. I have family here. There is palm trees and oceans. So my anywhere will always have a water and a palm tree. That's my anywhere. Right? Yeah. Um, and I agree with when else, you know, I'm not trying to make light of the, the tragedy and, and the, the pain, but when else can you spend time with your family when you're not flying in for a funeral, when you're not flying in to pick up the pieces. So here you are with your family for a few months. I don't know if your family's sick and, and other things. I hope everybody's healthy, but on a broad stroke, you're able to spend time with a loved one, not coming in and out because of a tragedy. That to me is lemonade. And that's to me where I take back on this. And what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's incredible too. Cause it's, it's like you get to create that space rather than getting thrown into it too. Yes. So it's like, what, what kind of feeling do you want to bring home? And uh, I think that was just nice for me because I went from, you know, Chicago to New York and then spent time consulting. So I was all over the place and it's like, I haven't felt connected to, you know, my mom and my brother and my sister in such a long time. And it's like now instead of coming home, like you're saying for a tragedy or you're going back home to try to fix something or, you know, support people. Now it's time to actually have fun and enjoy the company 
and you know create a sense of community rather than trying to you know pick up the pieces and and really try to fix things so it's it's nice it's a nice change of pace and it's nice to be in that environment too yeah and actually you said something that i didn't i didn't think about on how i phrased that question it's, it's also when you're coming in to pick up the pieces you're not coming in on your schedule you you have your week set up and then a family member calls you and it's like you got to come home so, so it's like when you get brought home for that reason most of the time it's an unexpected um, but yeah, this one, we're able to come back on our time and work on work where even our boss, coworkers, customers are also more flexible. So even the time you're spending with your family is also dimensionally different because the workload and the, we'll get the work done, but there is this, this part of, okay, everyone is kind of figuring this out. So I can kind of spend some time with the family and get the work done. I, that's how what I'm saying. Are you feeling the same thing? Yeah, and I think people are just happier. I think, I mean, I guess it kind of goes in two different ways. It's uh, it, it's kind of like that mental toughness and having yep. empathy and being connected to other people and to have a routine and, and not have attachment to work because then, you know, work becomes your identity. <laughs> right. And so you're just, you can't stop working. I, I've seen that at, at my current job where, People are on from 8 a.m. till midnight just because they don't know what else to fill their time with. And so Corona is like a, a blessing and a curse in some yeah. ways. It gives you all this extra space to do with it, but you got to put something in there. Otherwise, your attachments and your old identity just takes over and it tries to fill up that space. So you have nothing, nothing there. And so... I think it's really important. It goes back to like the routine and mental toughness yeah. and checking in with other people and, um, you know, having empathy there and meeting people where they're at, talking to them, understanding and listening rather than just assuming, you know, what's going on with their world. Yeah, no, so I mean, it's, uh, absolutely. I think well there's said. a lot of great stuff there. And I still have more questions. So great. Now, yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you take from New York? And what did you donate, right? Are you going back or did oh. you just know it all? <laughs> like, cause then I'll share my experience because so now we made the decision. We're going, we're nomads. We are going, what do you take? What do you not take? <laughs> I threw out everything. It wow. was, I threw out my bed. I threw out my couch. I threw out my kitchen table. Uh, I think I took just like my computer, my laptop, you know, the electronics, um, and a yoga mat. I think that was about it. It was like the essentials, like what I want. And then everything else was just extra, throw it away, get something new and, and start over and start fresh. What about you? Well, I, we're gonna, we're, you know, we're brothers from another mother. Like I get you, I, I totally get you. <laughs> so, I love it. So for me, I figured I was gonna go to Miami. So what I did is you say through it. I threw out some, but I donated my entire closet. I said, I too. That's awesome. I am, I'm not, I'm going to start fresh. That's one. Uh, furniture donated, sold, or just left. I have a bunch of flat screen TVs I've sent to all my brothers. I was like, who wants a flat screen TV? I'm taking nothing. They're all being shipped. Um, I get to Miami. And I just went on Amazon and I, you know, I just was like, let me order bathing suits. Let me order like swim shirts. Let me order shorts. Cause it's, I figured I was going to be in a different atmosphere. Then there was something really cathartic of not having things. Like, did you have that feeling where you're like my whole life oh, is yeah. in a suitcase and it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> I actually lived in a suitcase. Cause when I was in Texas, I just basically took my suitcase with me and that was, that was it. And so even during COVID, I actually tried to stay with my uh, current partner at the time. Good. And so I was honestly living out of a suitcase for six months and now having a closet and all this other stuff, it feels weird. It feels like, all right, I have all this extra, I don't want to call it baggage, but all these different things I got to take along with me. And before, like when I had that, it was just so freeing because you just had the essentials. You only, you only took what you wanted to take with you. And it was a conscious choice yeah. for each and every one of those. 
I know. And maybe, maybe for guys, it's different than girls, but I have three, <laughs> I have three pairs of shoes. I've got my nice sneakers, my workout sneakers, my, my beach sneakers. It's like, it's amazing when you really think about like what you need and mm -hmm. how you can live. Um, I get you. I get you. And I, I will be settling down, but I said to family, friends, I said, you know, for this year or for the rest of this year, 2021, I said, I just don't know where, where life is going to be. So I too want to just be flexible. Um, want to yeah. do the work. I don't know where, you know, the company is, we don't know where our, our office is then going to reopen. We don't know where the office is going to be. So there's just so many unknowns. So I'm trying to mechanically have my life be as flexible as where the work is going to be. Yeah. And then it's like, are people even going to go back to the office? Like, that's a big question. Yep. Like for our, our company, productivity actually went up by about 25% when people got to work from home. Yeah. And it's like, does it make sense to go back to the old ways when, you know, this new way gives everybody what they want to be able to spend time with friends and family to not have to do that terrible commute to work anywhere and be flexible and be able to travel and um, still be able to connect with people at work. Yeah. So, well, I want to I want to pick up a thread there because the the productivity part. I, I want to I want to tell you where I'm my hypothesis hypothesis is around productivity. When I when I look at myself and some people I've had on the show. COVID and, and being in self-isolation, working from anywhere, not commuting, my time allocation for critical thinking, true critical thinking and strategic thinking is top right. And I think because I have more time to do critical thinking, true, my productivity is better because I'm, I'm spending more time thinking and then my less time writing. And so I, I don't know if I'm describing that, that that dynamic, right? But because I can think about it so and get the time for space, my productivity is better because I think I'm working more efficiently. Are you seeing the same thing? Where yeah, you're it's because it's kind of like your execution is execution time rather than being yeah. bogged down with a bunch of little things that you have to, you know, okay, so and so came over to my desk, I got to pay attention to them. You know, I got papers coming through or a few emails. And, and now with that space, there's to create and have that creativity where you couldn't see like that before so it's almost just like getting your head up and i totally agree and i think i think that's the beauty of like being able to work from home because then you do have that space you can take you know 30 minutes an hour and go take a walk or you can do a quick workout routine rather than feeling like you have to rush back to the office exactly so i I really enjoy that space and to be able to create. And then when you want to execute, you're able to get everything done in such a shorter amount of time rather yes. than spending, you know, that eight, nine hours trying to do a two hour task <laughs> and you can just knock it out when you're, when you, I don't want to say feel like it, but when there's motivation and a clear path going yeah. forward. Yeah. That I, that better said than I, I, I tried to frame it, but that's exactly where my hours, my days, my weeks, when I look back on, like I'm really now fine tuned on, Here's my critical thinking time. Here's my execution time. Because they're not the same time in the day. So now that I've got that awareness of like, yeah, this is when I can really sit down and think. And this is when I can execute. And I, and I just feel like I've accomplished. So I think uh, I, I like those words yeah. of execution time. I think I'm going to add that. You and your team, you moved or like, let's say you're working from a different place. Anyone else on the team uh, stayed in New York or did the team also kind of now move different to uh, different locations? So it's actually kind of funny. Um, I have a really cool boss, um, really two of them, and they're both very, you know, get your work done um, and very open to people being across the U.S. So actually, my boss was in Chicago. His boss was in Delaware. Uh, like a bunch of my teammates were in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Um, I had people in, I want to say like Jacksonville. So it's like, I was really one of the only people in New York. So for me not to be there, yep. it didn't really matter, which was pretty cool. Cause then it's like, okay, there's no reason why I can't work from home. There's no reason why, right. you know, I'm not connecting with people in person. I'm not, besides like a trip, that was the only thing that was different. And so I think 
I think the, the hardest thing is, is like connecting people over Zoom and being connecting to people over the phone rather than in person. But I had already been working on those skills uh, for the past, you know, year and a half, basically doing the same thing, working from New York. Yeah, I, I don't get the sense that uh, I speak to a lot of people. It seems like you've got some pretty strong skills, interpersonal skills. So that's that's a leg up. Yeah. Um, now you're at the pizzeria. Should we ask if you're if you're making anything? <laughs> so, should, what, I mean, what kind of pizza do you like? What, are you like Chicago style, New York style? Yeah. What's your? I mean, I don't want to put too much pressure on you. I'll just take a cheese, I guess. I don't want you to get all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's easy. I mean, you gotta you gotta switch it up. We got a. We got like nacho pizza, baked potato pizza. I mean, how we long got... were you there before they put you like, listen, we could use the extra hand. You're doing the takeout. Like how long did it take them to, for you to get back into it? Um, so I actually help out with like the, the taxes for uh, <laughs> with my mom. And so we were actually doing taxes last night. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather make a pizza. That's a lot more fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, you know what? And this is. Um, and that's what I say again about this show. I love the show is, you know, with self-isolation, these are stories that I, I bring to my dinner table. Um, we don't get to connect. And what I say to people about what I like about the podcast is um, well, you and I are locked in. And if we were at a restaurant, sometimes when we're locked in, it's actually, just give me one second. I see a friend, right? So now we're not, now I go see the friend and then you get back now and you're on your phone. You're, you know, you're doing something else or waiting for a check or phone rings. I mean, so for me during self-isolation, what has been a nice up, I didn't know I'd be podcasting, but to me, this was my hack to just meet people who like data and who are empathetic. That's why we get together. Yeah, that's awesome. It's incredible. I'm actually, uh, I have a podcast as well. Tell us about it. um, Yeah, it's called Your Pursuit of Wellness. So it's about helping people put, awareness around wellness and the multifaceted nature of it. So it's, you know, it's not just about how you look, it's not just about how you feel, but it's like your relationship to your partner, to your friends, to money, right. to your body, to your mind. You know and so I love if everyone who's watching this on the stream, you know, our guest is very good looking. So I love when good looking guys are like, it's not about the looks. It's about the whole package. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is the most incredible good looking guy. He's got the cool name and he's like, yeah, it's, it's not, it's the whole thing. It's you got to eat. You got to eat. You, gotta, you look great. I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps too, but uh, right. it's the whole, it's the whole pie. Right. You don't, just don't want to settle with one piece. It's you nice if you look like pizza. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, it doesn't suck. And then the rest of the pieces, if you look like Matthew McConaughey, the piece, it can suck. Uh-huh. Actually, one other very quick story. I was watching this thing last night on this ridiculous yeah. thing. Hold on. They said they had Bon Jovi, all right, who a great looking rock and roll guy. Um, and he's married and and they have a story that his wife, when they go out to dinner, like 80% of the time, the wife's order is either not taken or wrong because everyone is so focused on what Bon Jovi wants. <laughs> oh wow. So everyone's like, John, what do you it's want? It's gotta be painful. And, then she, and now she's like, she's used to it after all these years. But again, looks matter. Like they so focus on job by Joby, they forget to take his wife's order. Yeah. Oh my gosh. If I was her, I'd just write down my order. It's like, take this. Because <laughs> I know you're going to forget. Right. Job by Joby, right. Everyone's like, it's on. Don't screw up his order. All right. So sorry. So health, wellness, and yes, good looking. Go on. Let me hear it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically, because uh, I think that's the, the thing that I realized from um, like COVID it's that it's not just one thing. It's not just like your job or your profession. It's it's like your routine, you know, your ability to go work out and how you treat your body. And, it, and it's your own pursuit. It's not just following somebody else. Hey, you know, somebody did a bodybuilding competition and I'm going to follow their, you know, workout routine. It's right. like coming up to what fits you, your body and your lifestyle. So that's what uh, I've been working on and bringing on uh, different guests. And I think that's the coolest thing is being able to connect with people and hear their story too. Uh, Cause everybody's got a different story. And I, I think it's awesome during COVID because a lot of people just want to overly share. They're just ready to talk to anybody that's right. ready to, to listen to. Yeah. And are you doing, cause I want to add a link to it. Are you doing video or just audio? How are you setting up your, your show? 
Yeah, so uh, currently we got the first season out, so it's on YouTube, and we also have it on awesome. Spotify as well. So, yeah. And how if, long? Uh, how long did it take you to really find your voice? Because again, I'm new to podcasting. This is not my background. This is not what I went through. This came out of just self isolation. Like, how many episodes did it really take you to be like, I can do this, and this is my voice? Or are you still still trying to figure that out? I think I'm still trying to figure that out. And- still trying to find that balance i because when we look back at our first few those were pretty rough i know and, my, my too. <laughs> <laughs> and so i'd probably say like episode five or six it started the voice started and uh, the balance started but i think it's still finding it and fine-tuning it so yeah. what about you it was episode eight so we're close after the fifth episode I was like, I like doing this. I didn't know how long this would go, right? So we all have uh, been on social media. We all know that we either like tweeting or like being on Instagram and you can keep with it. This one was like, wow, I'm having a lot of fun. I could do this again. So that was after the fifth one. And then after the eighth one, I was like, okay, like I got to work on like my eye line. I have to work on my lighting. I need to work on better questions. I need to work. Like, I think I was like moving my head a lot or like moving. It. So like all of a sudden, like everything just started just to be like a, an art form. I started to study up and look at things and, and just work on my video game. And it's just been a lot of fun of just learning this new skill. I look at it as a, a just a craft. Um, and then after probably like the 10th or 15th, I started just to re-listen to Joe Rogan and re-listen to Howard Stern, not as the shock factor. I just want to look, watch them as like an artist of like, how do they break into a conversation? How do they move a conversation? How do they bring their personality? So these are things that it's an, a long line of how to learn, but that's things that I've started doing. And what about yourself? How have you tried to perfect yeah. your craft? I think it's just like, it's kind of like, you know, playing a sport, you watch the tape, you watch yourself and you take notes. And cause I talk with my hands a lot and that is very distracting when it's on a podcast. It's the little things like that, that you're talking about that I think are super important. And then I, it's okay. about like finding a rhythm. I got one of like these. Another person. I got one so of these, have? a stress ball. So I, <laughs> cause I did the same thing with the hand talking. <laughs> so like, I, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm so, yeah. so with you brother. Like I have this because I am the same, just talking with some, like if I don't, you know, have to sit on my hands or do something or as if not, I'm like, Hey, this is a great idea. Oh yeah. yeah. No, and then, it, then it's like the balance too. Cause you have people that'll talk a lot and then you have people that don't talk at all. So how do you navigate both of those types of conversation? That's what I'm still working on. I think the most right now, cause you never know what type yeah. of person the person is until they get on camera. Like, People that I know to be very social get really shy. And other people that I, you know, think that are shy get super social because they're talking about a topic that they absolutely love. Yeah, Definitely it's, a craft and an art. Yeah, I agree. I think people that really perfect their video presence, perfect content creating, I think become more valuable employees also because we are amplifying our brand amplifying our work we're going to be found more we're going to be asked to speak more i don't know where it goes but i think this has been something that during COVID has been an upskill that's what i think yeah an unex- totally unintended agree. upskill but i feel like i'm much more comfortable on camera now because of all the podcasts and if i was just working remotely i had what's you what is your, what is your thoughts on comfort level yeah because then you just kind of hide behind the computer screen. And I think this puts us in front. Yeah. Um, and it's uncomfortable, especially for the first few. But once you get that rhythm and you do it enough, it's just like a, a muscle. You flex it enough and you, you work it enough that it's, yeah. you just get used to it. It's normal. And I think that's the coolest thing in, in being able to express yourself without having uh, body language. I think that's huge. Because if you can express yourself and create a band, brand just from your voice and eye contact, I think that's yeah pretty powerful. No, absolutely. Yeah, this has been fun, man. We'll we'll meet. I just don't know what city. 
Like it might be Miami, <laughs> it might be Vegas, it might be LA, it might be New York, but we're going to stay close. So this is this is a lot yeah, of fun. Definitely. Easy to see why you're successful. You're an outlier on your personality, your thinking, and and you play in the data security world. How did you find data security and fraud, and and how, where did that come from? I just lucked into it. I think my network and my relationships really brought me into it. I was doing consulting for the longest time and working with data and analytics. And one of my buddies was like, hey, I'd love for you to come work at the Fraud Fusion Center at Citibank. And I took him up on it. I left Chicago and I went straight to New York and New Jersey, tri-state, tri-state area. So it was, a, I think it was a lot of fun. It was a great transition and I love fraud because it changes like all the time. So you gotta think like a, a fraudster, you gotta think like a bad guy. Yeah and try to get in the head of them is is not easy it's not you know all right i gotta get people to open this email how can i create an algorithm to do that it's like what are they doing now and then what's next how can we yeah. stop them next so it's great it's a lot of fun yeah it's it's um the thing about fraud is no matter how much time we put into it i feel like sometimes we're always behind you know, for someone like me who enjoys sharing information and my ideal would be to have just one password because I can't remember all passwords. And <laughs> like, so like, we don't realize how much fraudsters have impacted how, like just our day-to-day life. It's like passwords should be 12 characters, one letter, one number, one uppercase. That's one side of fraud, right? Don't, don't open up an email that you don't know. That's like, it's um, don't share thing. I mean, there is just so many things. That's just the stuff that, that we know. I'm sure that stuff that you're working on is like two, three, four levels deeper than that. But I still think so, if, yeah. if everyone can just know the basics, you can probably help prevent a company security by a, a big factor. Don't open up emails you don't know. That alone could do wonders. Don't open up attachments. So what is you know the lowest hanging fruit tip that you can share with the community for fraud protection like you know the please don't do this one thing or two things is there um i would probably say one i guess it'd probably be advice it'd be one if you can use a vpn i'd use a vpn just so that way you're secure i think the other thing is is like check your credit bureau sign up for those automatic alerts because yeah, your, I hate to say it, but your data is typically out there. Like nobody might know who you are as a person, but they probably have your password and your email and they probably have your social security number out on the dark web. And I, and I hate to say that, but the only thing that you can do is be proactive and monitor what's going on. So if somebody is applying for a credit card in your name, you'll get an alert through the credit bureau. But if you're not watching it, you might have Old. accounts that have been opened and nobody even knows. And then you try to, uh, you know, get a mortgage or apply for a credit card. And you're like, wow, my credit score is 300. How did this happen? And it's like, cause you were hacked a long time ago and, and nobody ever paid attention yep. to it. But banks and other companies are more than helpful in getting you set up. So that way you can get I love it. all that resolved. Yeah. You know, it's, it's gold. You're giving us gold because you said something else. Banks, I know Chase Bank does that for free because I'm a Chase yeah. banker. And they're like, hey, for free, we'll do a check credit monitor and it's on your app. But I think you're right. I didn't put those two together, but you're right. Just the basic things you can do is just be aware. Be aware that let's understand that there's a good probability that your stuff is out there. They might not know you, but the number's out there. So if it's out there yeah. and we just have a little bit of indication, we can get ahead of it. Yep. The banks want this. Yeah. It's great. No, I think it's... And the VPN, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, banks just want you to be secure. You know, at the end of the day, like it helps them to yep. like help you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, well, this this was a great this was a great podcast. And at the end of the podcast, I like to introduce people to other members. So I try to introduce you to like three to five people that are part of the community because then it helps strengthen the community bond and friendships. Um, I always feel like once the work gets back. I don't know what the community looks like, but the friendship should last well beyond this time. Is there a sector? Is there a 
background, who would you like me to connect you with? And this is, you don't have to take these connections. They'll come through LinkedIn, but it's just a way to build you into the community and feel connected. Yeah, I think uh, somebody in the fitness and wellness background in, okay. in area would be really cool. And then even like coaching, I think that's something that I'm starting to get into as well, whether that's like uh, life coaching or executive coaching um, with somebody with like that background would be very yep. interesting to, to get to know as well. Oh, I'm happy to, happy to. All right, and uh, this is the Data Standard. We're sponsored by Pandio. We thank them for their support. It helps us scale and meet great people. So I appreciate Pandio and, and Austin. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us on the show. Yeah, of course.